welcome back students to the second part of our discussion in the lesson on units and measurement in our last class we had discussed about the measurement of length so today we will discuss about measurement of mass and time mass is a basic property of matter it does not depend on temperature pressure or location of the object in space the si unit of mass is kilogram so the prototype of the international standard kilogram supplied by the international bureau of weights and measures bipm are available in many other laboratories of different countries in india it is available at the national physical laboratory npl in new delhi so while dealing with atoms and molecules the kilogram is an inconvenient unit obviously in this case there is an important standard unit of mass called the unified atomic mass u which has been established for expressing the mass of atoms we will be studying about all this in bit more detail but right now let us get some idea regarding what is mass it's the amount of matter contained in any object that is the total energy content that would be nuclear chemical thermal and e is equal to mc square that is the famous relation given by sir albert einstein where m stands for mass mass can be inertial mass that is the sluggishness of an object its resistance to acceleration about which we have studied in newton's second law of equal to m into a or it could be gravitational mass which is proportional to the weight of an object determined by the gravitational pull on the object so w is equal to m into g so talking about the si unit of mass that is kilogram it is equal to the mass of the international prototype of kilogram so how to define kilogram 1 kilogram the kilogram is equal to the mass of the international prototype of the kilogram that is a platinum iridium alloy cylinder kept at international bureau of weights and measures at sevres near paris france and this definition was adopted in the year 1889 so let us get some idea regarding inertial mass what is inertial mass if we exert a force on an object it will accelerate but the size of the acceleration is in the same for all objects some accelerate quickly others slowly the tendency of a body to resist accelerating is called inertia so by applying a standard force to an object and measuring its resulting acceleration we can calculate an inertial mass how to measure inertial mass so inertial mass is measured with the use of an inertial balance or spring loaded pan you can see the picture how does an inertial balance look like so it is a dynamic measurement that is a measurement that can be only be accurately recorded when the system is in a state of motion how is it done the pan is first calibrated by measuring the period of two known masses whenever we are calculating mass you must have seen in any grocery shop also that we make use of some known masses and then with the help of comparison we compare the unknown mass with that known mass so a similar method is is also employed here so we first calibrate the pan by measuring the period of two known masses period refers to the time period obviously the time period of vibration the two periods are then plotted on a graph of t square versus mass subsequent knowledge of the vibrational period of any unknown mass will allow its inertial mass to be interpolated from this calibration graph so this type of balance will measure an object's inertial mass even in the absence of gravity that's the best part about it now talking about gravitational mass the earth pulls down on objects at its surface with a gravitational force so we can measure the strength of this force by placing objects on a spring the stronger the force the more compressed the spring by measuring the compression of the spring we can gauge the gravitational force on the object and use that to define its gravitational mass and obviously for this purpose we make use of a device called the spring balance that all of you might have used in your practicals in the laboratory so how to compare between gravitational mass and inertial mass gravitational mass is the mass of an object due to gravitational force inertial mass is the resistance to acceleration due to any type of force gravitational mass is measured by allowing a test object to fall freely under gravity while inertial mass is measured by applying a force to give an acceleration on an object 
gravitational mass is measured when the object in motion due to gravity and inertial mass can be measured when the object is in motion due to an applied force. So, calculation of gravitational mass employs Newton's law of universal gravitation while inertial mass can be calculated using Newton's second law. Time. Time is a fundamental aspect of physical world. The standard unit of time is second. One second is the duration to cover 9192631770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. This definition was adopted in the year 1967. The unit of time, the second was at one time considered to be the fraction 1 by 86400 of the mean solar day. The exact definition of mean solar day was left to the astronomers. However, measurements showed that irregularities in the rotation of Earth made this an unsatisfactory definition. Commonly employed devices since ancient times for measurement of time, as you can see in the picture, was it a sundial or a sand clock or the normal clocks that we have. To measure any time interval, we need a clock. We now use an atomic standout of time, which is based on the periodic vibrations produced in a cesium atom. This is the basis of a cesium clock, sometimes called atomic clock. Such standards are available in many laboratories. In the cesium atomic clock, the second is taken as the time needed for 9192631770 vibrations of the radiation corresponding to the transition between two hyperfine levels of the ground state of cesium-133 atom. The vibrations of the cesium atom regulate the rate of the cesium atomic clock just as the vibrations of a balance wheel regulate an ordinary wristwatch or the vibration of a small quartz crystal regulate a quartz wristwatch. The cesium atomic clocks are very accurate. In principle, they provide portable standard. The national standard of time interval second as well as the frequency is maintained through four cesium atomic clocks. A cesium atomic clock is used at the National Physical Laboratory, New Delhi, to maintain the Indian standard of time. In our country, the NPL, that is National Physical Laboratory, has the responsibility of maintenance and improvement of physical standards including that of time, frequency. The efficient cesium atomic clocks are so accurate that they impart the uncertainty in time re realization as 1 part in 10 to the power 13. This implies that the uncertainty gained over time by such a device is less than 1 part in 10 to the power 13. They lose or gain no more than 3 microseconds in one year. In view of the tremendous accuracy and time measurement, the SI unit of length has been expressed in terms of the path length light travels in certain interval of time. The time interval of events that we come across in the universe vary over very wide range. So in this manner, we can carry out the measurement of the three basic quantities about which firstly we had studied in our previous class that was about length. And today we studied about mass and time. Thank you.